So we're finally ready to start constructing a two observer diagram for space time. And that'll be a single diagram with two sets of axes, one for each observer, each in a different reference frame. We'll start in this video by thinking one more time though about spatial coordinates. So now we'll have, um, the picture we'll have is two coordinate systems, Anastasia and Beowulf. And they're gonna agree at the origin, but Beowulf is gonna twist his coordinate system. And we're gonna wanna think how would we calibrate um, Beowulf's axis compared to Anastasia's? What's the relationship between those two? So in this video, we'll work through that, and then we'll do the same for spacetime. Okay, so here is the situation. We've got Anna and a coordinate system, and then Beowulf and a coordinate system, and they agree, they're right on top of each other, and, but Beowulf is just twisted a little to the right. So these black axes, X and Y, we're in space now, not space time, is how Anna is measuring points in space. And Beowulf is going to use his coordinate system, drawn here in blue, to measure points in space. So we want to think about how these are related, and in particular, what's going on on this axis. So let's say that Beowulf has some point in space, which I'll draw with a um, green dot, and Beowulf, according to his axis, says, all right, this, is, uh, this point is one meter from the origin, and it's all on the y-axis. There's no zero axis here. And so Beowulf would also say the distance from the origin to the green dot is one. Um, all right, so what does Anna make of this situation? So Anna says, all right, so Beowulf's out here somewhere in space, and I don't know exactly what this point is, but he just told me that the, um, that the distance between the green dot and the origin, this point in question, is one meter. And you know, distances are um, coordinate independent. We're, gonna, we're not gonna agree on the coordinates, but we're gonna agree on the distance. All right, so how might I think about this over here? So Anna could say, all right, Gee, one distance from, from the, from the, one meter, one unit from the origin. Gosh, what would that be? Well, you know, if I was up here, so this would be like one, one meter for me. So on my y-axis, if I just go up one meter, like this is a point that is a distance of one from the origin. How is this related to that? Oh, geez, well, let's see. Oh, well, then she might remember, you know, I just listened to this video. It's kind of a little long, but it was about like circles. And um, the, the main takeaway for circles was that a circle is a set of all points that's a constant distance from the origin. So what that tells me is that this dot and this dot are both uh, they both lie on a circle of radius one. So, um, right, so this is one meter in uh, Beowulf's coordinate system, and this is one meter in Anna's coordinate system. And um, both of these points have a distance of one from the origin, um, therefore, they have to lie on a circle. And then, you know, Beowulf could come along and say, all right, what about this point here? I'm going to have a point that's two meters from the origin. And Anna would say, not quite sure what to do with colors here. All right, well, that is going to, so this is going to be, the idea is this is another two meters. These points are going to be connected by a circle of radius 2. So what this does is this tells us how, if we have um, the y-axis for Anna calibrated, and we don't have the y-axis for Beowulf calibrated, we can perform that calibration by just arcing along a circle. So you've got one meter here, arc along a circle of radius 1, and where that intersects, that's where we would mark the one meter point for Beowulf. 
Same thing for 2 meters and 3 meters. So in space, um, this process seems a little bit maybe unnecessary or overkill, but what we'll see in the next video is that um, a similar line of reasoning will lead to calibrating a time axis, and the result there will be, um, I think, a little surprising and counterintuitive.